Hi everyone, welcome back. If you are new here, hi, my name is Jade. I've recently become a YouTuber again. <sighs> no, but seriously, I took some time off, which I'll talk a little bit more later on in this video, but I wanted to do an updated question and answer video for you guys because I feel like it's very overdue. I've obviously done question and answers on my Instagram stories, but I haven't updated YouTube for a while. I was gonna do another question and answer on my Instagram stories, but some of the questions were really, really good. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna see if you guys want me to answer it on Instagram or on YouTube. So I put a poll up. The majority said YouTube, and I think YouTube is a good idea as well. So yeah, let's get into the questions. So first question that I'll answer is, what camera do you use to vlog and what camera do you use to take pictures? The camera that I use to vlog is the Canon G7X. I have owned three Canon G7Xs. It is a really good camera. The quality is really good. I even filmed my Get Ready With Me in my last video on the G7X. The quality is really, really good, but it does have focus issues. Sometimes getting it to focus is an absolute mission. The camera breaks quickly. It's very, very delicate. As I said to you before, I have owned three of them. You probably think I'm very, very stupid for, to keep buying them, but I'm the sort of person, once I get used to something and comfortable with something, I tend to stick to that something. But once this camera goes on me, which one day I'm sure it will, I am thinking of getting, I think it's the Sony ZV-1, I think it's called. I can't remember. But people say that's a really, really good camera. I haven't owned a Sony before, but I still do love the G7X. Even though it's got its issues, it's got its problems, like we all do, I still think it's a really good camera. But it is still pricey, and I think for the price and how quickly it can break, it's just, it is a bit of a joke. And I'm definitely not the only person that's complained about this. I've seen plenty of people complain about this. Oh, and also for my vlog, sometimes I use my phone. You can actually change the settings on your phone to 4K. Obviously the more updated your phone is the better. So I have the iPhone 12 plus. It's the iPhone 12 plus, what is it? What are you? It's the iPhone 12 Pro Max. <laughs> Bloody hell. Got there in the end. So obviously my one is the latest and I believe that the camera on the Max is better than the, just the normal size iPhone. But I'll quickly show you if you didn't already know how to change the settings to make the video film in 4K. This is my phone. Go into settings, I scroll down and then I go to camera. And then here, as you can see, it says record video. So click on that and then there's all these options here. Mine is at 4K, but I think it's usually set to one of these. So yeah, sometimes if I feel a little bit awkward, like taking out my whole camera and my tripod or something, I'll do some footage on the phone. But with the phone, you do need like good lighting to still make it look crisp. With this camera, even in not the best lighting, it's still quite crisp, so yeah. With my pictures, sometimes I use my phone, sometimes I use this camera. The ones that I used to take for like my makeup pictures, like my really close makeup pictures, I used to use the Canon 5D, but it's big, it's bulky, it's, it's honestly heavy to like take about with you and stuff. So a phone or a little camera like this is a lot easier, but if I need to get a sick professional shot say that's like the requirement for the brand they need it to be like hd that's the camera that i will pick up someone asks how do you feel about the 19th of july when restrictions are lifted my feelings are quite mixed to be fair i'm obviously excited to somewhat get life back in the uk but i obviously don't know what this will mean for the uk and the rest of the world i know that australia had their restrictions completely lifted and there was like no mask i think that they've recently gone back to a into a lockdown. I'm a very sociable person, so I would obviously prefer life to be normal and for us to be able to do whatever we want. But at the same time, I don't want this to backfire for us to just have to go into another lockdown because the lockdowns really affect people's mental health. The lockdown for me affected my mental health a lot. Not so much the first lockdown. The first lockdown was kind of calm, although I had like my skin issues going on and stuff. But the first lockdown was was okay. It was kind of like, do you know what? I needed this break. I needed to 
step back and just be with my family. But by the third lockdown, I I honestly thought I was going to go mad. I thought I was going to go crazy. I remember saying all the time, I don't know how much more I can cope with this. The only thing I can say is I've got very mixed emotions about it. Are you going away this summer? I don't have any plans to go away this summer. Nothing's booked or anything like that. It seems like so much effort to go away right now. I did tweet that the other day and a lot of people are like, it's not as bad as it seems, just go. But I am quite busy with a lot of things going on in the UK right now anyway. And I don't like to go on holiday unless everything that I've got to do here is clear because then it's like, by the time I come home, I've got bare to do and I just cannot deal. But I am hoping to go away at some point this year. I would love to do abroad content. I miss I miss making content abroad, taking pictures, doing vlogs and things like that. Ayla really wants to go on holiday, but I just honestly have to see what happens. Would you do a small meet and greet with your supporters? Absolutely. I love meeting you guys. I love knowing what my subscribers and my supporters look like and seeing you guys in real life and the things that you say to me, I'm just like, it honestly makes my day because what I want from the internet and from my platform is to meet like-minded people, meet people that are into the same things as me, meet people that get me and understand my journey. I've done meet and greets in the past, but I would definitely like to do them differently in the future. Before with a lot of meet and greets, it's sort of been, you know, in collaboration with other brands and you guys come and it's like, hi, take a picture, chat for a little bit and then it's bye on to the next person. I really would love um, an intimate setting where I can just sit and speak to a few of you. I would also absolutely love to put on like a party or something like that. I love partying. My whole family loves partying. I'm not like a hardcore partier, but I do love to go out. And when I do, I like a very good time. <laughs> I used to show my wild drunk side a lot more before, but as time's gone on, a lot of the time I don't share that side to me anymore. But I'm still that girl when I'm out, honestly. So I'd love to put on a party and have some of you guys come and we just have the best time. Dancing, getting some drinks in. It would probably have to be 18 and over, but I would definitely do like other meet and greets for all ages. Once we know what's happening with this whole pandemic situation, then I'll be able to plan things like that for sure. How do you consume enough calories in the day I'm struggling? So if you're new here, basically I have always struggled with my weight since I was a little girl, but after I had my daughter Ayla, it got rock bottom. I wasn't eating at all. My brain wouldn't work. My eyesight would get blurry. I was dizzy all the time. I just honestly wasn't eating. It's actually sad. But me doing that has never been for the purpose of trying to lose weight or be skinny. I've never wanted to be skinny. I think all bodies are beautiful, but I've always been quite uncomfortable in mine. I think it's because of a lot of the comments that I've had in my life from family members, from past friends, from absolute strangers, from teachers, from quite literally everyone. And it's it's been a part of my life for just such a long time. And I, it just didn't make sense to me, it made sense to a lot of people. I didn't want to be skinny, but you're not eating. How does that makes sense. The only way I knew the answer was by going to hypnotherapy. It unraveled so many things. It basically turned out that my eating issues was to do with punishing myself ultimately. And he was like, you're doing it because of this. It, it unlocked so much for me. That was the start of my healing because I understood why Finally, this would honestly take a whole video. It has been a massive journey for me. It has taken me years to get to the point that I'm at today. I'm still not fully out of it. It's still a daily struggle. My emotions still do affect my eating. So if I am sad, angry, any negative emotion, it completely affects my eating. But I have not for a very long time, and I mean about maybe two years now, I've not gone a whole day without not eating at all. But it is a daily struggle. So it's like, I eat to survive. I eat for energy. I eat because as humans, we have to. 
otherwise we won't be healthy. I honestly don't even know how deep to get because this has been, this has my, been my whole life. So I can't put a whole life's worth of trauma into a few minutes. Keep it together, babe, keep it together. I don't know why I answered this question so early on in the video. <laughs> it took like years away from my life. Not every day is a good day. Some days are better than other days. So some days I'm able to eat more than other days, but I always eat. In terms of getting calories in, I do drink Ensure shakes now, so you can have up to two of those a day. Each one contains 300 calories, so if you have two, 600 calories, and that helps with adding extra calories into my diet. A lot of the time for breakfast, I will have porridge or oats. For some people, eating oats makes them really, really full for a long time. For me personally, if I eat oats, I can feel so hungry like an hour or two later. And if I didn't eat the oats, I wouldn't really feel like that. My partner cooks a lot of my meals as well. That is one of the things that he does. He's a chef. So that has massively had a positive effect on me and my eating. He is on a fitness journey himself. He kills it, man. Like he goes gym all the time. He eats so much, even if he's feeling so full. I, a lot of the time I look at him and I'm like, I don't know how you're doing it, but he just gets it in, he gets it done. It's really inspiring to be around. So obviously he's eating a lot for the gym. So a lot of the time he'll say to me like, do you want me to make you anything while I'm in the kitchen and whatnot? And a lot of the time I'll say, yeah, or I'll attempt. The old me would have said no. And that's something that I learned in hypnotherapy. We created the new Jade. So what would the new Jade do? The new Jade would try, she would try to eat. But the old Jade just wouldn't attempt at all. But the new Jade, she tries. And more time, I actually finish the dish, which is funny because I, don't feel hungry at all, but I actually do finish the meal. I'm probably not answering your question very well. And to be honest with you, I feel like it's because I don't know. I'm still like on this journey myself. Not every day is a completely successful day for me. It feels wrong to almost advise you on how you should get more calories in. But finding out what foods make you feel, I guess, hungrier. Maybe consider getting some shakes in or making some smoothies. For me personally, I don't, I don't get rid of food groups. The reason why is because I don't want to stress myself out with eating. I just, I just want to eat. How are you feeling mentally, emotionally and physically? I am up and down. Yesterday, I was a mess. Today, I feel absolutely fine. I feel like for me, the biggest thing is I find it quite hard to balance my life a little bit. So obviously I have my career, I have my daughter, I obviously have my family, that includes my boyfriend, I have my friends, and then I have myself. And then I have things that I've got to do, like errands, food shopping, going to the pet store, sending things off to the post office, whatever it may be. And I am like, oh my God, there's not enough time in a day. There's not enough days in a week. I wish as a person I could just split myself in two or better yet split myself in four. I just find it so hard to do everything and it can affect me. I definitely think moving back with my mum has taken a lot of that stress away. I feel younger again. <laughs> before when I had my own place, I think as, mu as much as I loved it, right? And I did, I, lo I loved the home that I created, but I'm 25 years old, right? And I think I just felt super overwhelmed because I'm like, oh my God, I'm 25. I've got a kid, I've got a career, I've got a house. So many responsibilities. And sometimes it would make me feel like, ah! I honestly had to just like have a word with myself and say to myself, what is it that you want right now? And I think even you guys can see it in me, like I'm just more relaxed. As I'm getting older, I'm learning how to cope with things way better. So like, even if I'm not the best, emotionally, physically, mentally, I bounce back way quicker than I did before. When I first started my career, I had this like, go get a mentality, like I, I'm, getting shit done, I don't care. I feel like I'm back to that now. I love that for me, honestly. So you know what, I'm gonna say that I'm doing good, but there are things in my head that I obviously worry about. I'm just trying to not take life so seriously. You know what, more time things always work out in the end. At the time, it feels like everything's a mess. How am I gonna get through this? But I always get through it. It always turns out all right and I think just reminding myself of that helps me a lot so 
Thank you for asking as well. Did you do any sports growing up? So I used to do gymnastics in middle school. I was quite good actually. I would usually get used to flip about and stuff like that, honestly, because I'm so light and I definitely was light then. People used to just toss me about and I used to go up on people's shoulders and be lifting my legs and be doing the splits and all sorts. Like I was really good and I was really flexible and I loved it. And then when I left middle school, I just didn't continue it. How do you deal with being unwanted slash unloved by someone you want and love? Okay, so for me, I just f them off really. <laughs> I'm joking. I have experienced this before. I have experienced the feeling of being unwanted by someone that you want or you want to feel wanted by. But eventually I'm just like, oh baby girl, you deserve so much more. I am definitely someone that gives chances. I give warnings, I give chances. I tell you about yourself. If you're still not switching up, then I don't know what to tell you, but I've got to go. But I think it's learning to have enough respect for yourself where you're just like, do you know what? I love myself more than I love this person. I feel like a lot of the time when we love somebody, we create a fantasy of them in our head. We create like who we want them to be in our head or who they could be. And more time, they don't turn out that way. They might and good for them, but you can't be the punching bag in the process for that. You can't sit there and be like, they might change, they might change. Like if they do, well done, but you can't wait around for that. If you know you're giving it your all, then you deserve more. I obviously don't know everybody's circumstances. I don't know like the facts of your relationship. At some point, you're just gonna have to say bye. Cause it hurts too much to continuously feel unwanted and unloved. Thoughts on motherhood now. <laughs> Motherhood is beautiful. It is unreal seeing this mini human you created grow up and learn new things and see new things. It's beautiful. But it is the hardest shit I've ever done in my life. She's four now. So, you know, she's about to start school and she's understanding of certain things and whatnot. But it is tough, don't get me wrong. I obviously work from home a lot of the time. Most people work, they have to work, got to pay your bills and whatnot. Sometimes I'll be working and she just thinks I'm like at home, like she's not really getting that I'm working. But as she's getting older, she is realizing the finding the balance for that was hard. And it takes a lot from me emotionally because I want to be with you, I want to hang out with you, but I also have my career that I really, really enjoy doing and I was my own person before Ayla. I think a lot of people think that you become a mum and you just, you just stop being the person that you was. When Ayla was first born, I took on a lot of guilt. Like if I went on a trip, people would say to me like, you're a horrible mother. How can you leave your child? Meanwhile, they don't know that I'm completely depressed. I felt a lot of judgment at first and it was really tough to deal with. But these days you can't make me feel guilty. I know what I do as a mom. I know my thing. I was a first time mom. I'm still a first time mom, obviously. Like she's my only child, but I'm obviously more experienced now before I'd let the guilt of what people had to say riddle me, because I didn't know if they were right or wrong. I didn't know if what I was doing was right or wrong, but at the end of the day, there's absolutely no rule book. I know I treat my daughter with respect. She knows she's loved. She's spoiled. She's not a spoiled brat. I'll tell you that now. She's not a spoiled brat. I would not, I ain't dealing with that. But she's spoiled. She's my one baby at the end of the day. So no one can take that away from me. She starts school in September. I, feel so nervous. I don't let her know that because she's already feeling nervous to start school. So I'm being like really positive about it and stuff, but secretly I'm so nervous. I think I'm nervous because I'm projecting. I know my school experience. I know that I did not enjoy it. You couldn't pay me to go back to school. Although I would like to do higher education one day. Like I'd like to learn something new but that's a story for another day but I'm scared because I know what children can be like and I know that you know when your child gets around other children they can obviously be influenced she's quite a character though she's quite she gives leader vibes but then in that case I just hope that she is a good leader and you know is kind to children she is a kind little girl but I'm not one of these parents that thinks my child could never do any wrong. She's a human. She's gonna do wrong at the end of the day. But you know, Ayla is very, she's quite tomboyish. So she's into Spider-Man. She's into, you know, all things Marvel and 
she feels the most comfortable in a tracksuit. She doesn't really wear dresses. She doesn't really wear skirts. She does sometimes on the odd occasion. It's very rare that she wants to, but more time Ayla is in tracksuit and trainers. And I just hope that when she goes to school, kids are not like, oh, you're a girl. Like, why are you into Spider-Man? I think because I didn't like school, I will be able to recognize certain behavioral changes in her. I know that she's good and comfortable at home and, and with her family and with her dad's side too. I know that she's comfortable there. But then when it's like in school and she goes out into that world, it, it's just so different. But I'm gonna make sure she knows I've always got her back and she can speak to me about anything whenever. But yeah, I don't know what else to say on motherhood. It's beautiful, but it's incredibly hard. It's the hardest thing I literally do in my life. It's not like physically hard. I obviously know how to look after a child. You know, you bath them, you play with them, and you, things like that. I obviously know how to do things like that, but it's the splitting of the time. And I'm a young girl and trying to chase her dreams at the same time as being a mum so that's where it gets a little bit hard. How do you feel now that you've returned to YouTube? It's nice to see you back. Thank you. Do you know what? I feel great. I feel like, do you know how I feel? I feel like I've got that fire back in my belly. I feel excited to create again. And this is just, this is what I was waiting for. I obviously took um, a long time off. I've always sort of been kind of inconsistent with YouTube. I do have a whole video on that. But after that video, I was hoping to get consistent again. And then I think I posted like two or three videos after that video. And then I sort of came off again. The reasons for that was number one, pandemic. I couldn't create the sort of videos that I wanted to create. So obviously I could sit here and do videos like this, but ultimately I, I wanted to create vlogs and be out and about. You guys can see now from my vlogs that I would not have been able to achieve anything like that with the restrictions that were going on. So it was the pandemic, it was partly my skin, I felt so uncomfortable. My skin doesn't need to be perfect, but I had never experienced that. I was just like, what is going on? And it got me down. And all I wanted to do was just cure this situation. So that was where my focus was at. And another thing that stopped me from posting on YouTube actually was just the negative space on the internet. Trolling is insane and, and do you know what luckily for me I get so much love you guys are amazing honestly but there are times where there's just like an abundance of hate and it is loud and it's easy to say like oh ignore the haters after a while it will affect anybody and I, I'm a strong person at the start of my career I did not care about what anyone had to say say what you want speak your shit I did not care I think at the time Everything was new to me. I was getting invited to events that I've never been to, never thought I'd go to. I was getting invited to parties that I never thought I'd go to. I was getting money that I did not think I'd ever see. I was just like, speak your shit. I'm loving my life anyway. And then obviously, sadly, you get accustomed to a certain way of living and the parties and the events and the restaurants and stuff, they're not as wowing as they once was. And that's like that for anybody. That's not just like that for me. If you love roller coasters and you go on the same roller coaster every single day, it's not gonna be as fun anymore. You know the start, you know the finish. So obviously you get used to life and you get the same sort of abuse. In fact, you get more abuse than you was because you're because I'm obviously got bigger and bigger. It honestly can give you like <laughs> an identity crisis. You don't know who you're supposed to be. You don't know how to act. You don't know what to do. For a while, uh, it makes me feel sick admitting this sort of stuff because I'm just like, Jade, you are a strong person. Like what, what, what was you doing? I don't understand what you was doing. I, I honestly didn't know who to be anymore. I didn't know who I was anymore because I'm like, what part of me do I show without somebody criticizing me or saying something? And then it gets to the point where you're like, do you know what, anything I do, there's gonna be somebody. So I'm gonna do what the f I want to do. I feel like a lot of things that have happened in my life, whether that's my weight, whether that is who I've dated, 
blah, blah, blah. A lot of it's been made public, right? So then it gives people the, the opportunity to comment on it. And after a while, I was just like, I'm just not going to show much of myself anymore. And I know to some people it's like, you're known, like you're a, you're a YouTuber, you're a, you're a content creator, like you should expect people to talk about you. But I'm sorry, some people just take things way too far. People lie, people fabricate shit. And I'm just meant to stand there taking bullets. So yeah, in the end, I just stopped creating as much. I stopped sharing on stories as much. I stopped talking. I stopped, I didn't want to be on YouTube, but like, I just stopped. But it didn't feel right. I felt like I was letting myself down. I felt like it was unfair to myself to hide myself away because some people don't like some of the decisions that I've made in my life or some people don't like the way I look or some people don't like this and so that yeah, I'm, I'm not hiding anymore I often think about me being an old lady touch wood I'm, I reach old age but I always think about me being on my deathbed and on my deathbed I want to think to myself I lived my best life I rocked my shit I took risks and I did what the I want to do. Too often I'm around older people than me and I hear regret, regret, I regret this, I regret that, I wish I didn't listen to this, I wish I didn't listen to that person and I don't want to feel it. But as I say to you guys, it's it's you guys that keep me going, your messages, your comments, the encouragement. And this goes for anyone that you follow and love. If you see hate or you see a lie about us or just something that is like irrelevant to what we came on this platform to even do, speak up if you can. But yeah, man, I'm so happy to be back on YouTube. I'm so happy to be in this space that I'm in. And I feel like I've gone back to like my roots. I feel like without YouTube, you guys would never have known the sort of person that I am. Obviously we had Snap and things like that, but I really feel like YouTube let people know who I am. I remember reading a comment and I actually think it was on my Protein World vlog that I did. Someone commented and said, I don't think you would get half as much of the hate as you do if people just watch your videos. And it made me realise that like on Instagram, you know, people see my pictures and stuff and I'm cozy and I look a little bit fierce or whatever but that's just one that's just something that I can do I can just be that bitch like that's just part of me but my actual personality you guys get to see on YouTube and I wanted to go back to that because I want you guys to see that I'm still me I'm still kicking it I'm just an older more grown version of me have you found a house yet I have not found a house yet I was looking like a few months ago didn't love anything and I'm just not rushing this whole situation at all I'm just not moving until I know that the house is the one that I want to be in for a long time because I don't want to move again for about I don't know I this next house that I want to be in I want to be in for like 10 years so I just want to make sure that it's a smart decision but there's just so much to think about as well now because you've got to think about like the distance from Ayla school and things like that but I don't feel stressed about it I don't feel in any sort of rush I feel like everything's going to happen in good timing I trust this process so much how's your cat doing after getting neutered mine's due hers next week oh so Yuki she's doing fine she had the surgery everything went well she had to have a cone around her neck for like five days which is something that she really really did not like but we just wanted to make sure that she couldn't get to the wound we would take her cone off so she could eat and stuff and once we could see that she wasn't taking any notice of the wound we took it off but that was probably for her the worst part of it she's not acting any different she's not acting any different towards Ragnar either she doesn't hate us for it I thought maybe she would hold a grudge because you know cats can sometimes do that but she's absolutely fine and yeah I'm sure your cat will be just fine as well how does stand up for Black Lives Matter affect you and thank you by the way for being true to yourself you do not need to thank me at all honestly um, it affected me quite a bit actually sorry guys just had to change my battery on my camera but yeah as I was saying I'm obviously biracial I come from a black household so it only felt natural to me to stand up because I'm not I'm not uneducated on that topic however I'm not the gatekeeper of all knowledge and information in the entire world so with a lot of things that people were posting it taught me things and it educated me further taking in all the information and also resharing and doing research of my own and posting the research 
searching. It did take a lot out of me. It emotionally affected me a lot because obviously I learned a lot. I realized a lot of things. I put two and two together with a lot of things. I lost friends. Even though I was really emotional, I felt like really empowered. Um, another way it affected me is Instagram. Now I don't know if anyone's gonna believe me. I might sound um, quite nuts right now, but after I lost tons of followers, thousands and that, I, I lost like 12,000 within a day or two. I can't even remember, but tons. Just because I spoke about human rights, I was getting pure abuse. The DMs were insane, but I don't have any regrets with it. As you said, I stayed true to myself. I felt like for all the black people that I know, all the black people that have raised me, inspired me, I needed to use my platform. I'm aware that I haven't been through a lot of the trauma that dark skinned black people have been through. But for that reason then, I felt the need to use my privilege to speak up. What helps you get productive? I've hit a brick wall with everything. So the first thing is I let myself feel how I want to feel. I let my emotions out. I talk to people. I talk to my family, I talk to my friends. I cry out. I'll scream into a pillow. I'll do what I need to do. I just need to release it. After that, I sort of like take notes and sort of take notes of what's gonna make me feel better. So a lot of the time for me, that is cleaning. Cleaning the area, the space that I'm living in, organizing so that I feel more productive, then getting myself sort of ready. If I if I look good, more time I feel good. So washing my hair, giving myself a blow dryer, getting my nails done, getting my eyebrows done, that sort of thing sets me up and makes me feel ready to go. And sometimes I will take social media breaks if I need to, and and before I wouldn't, but I'm realizing the importance of it now. In May, I took a whole month off. I vlogged, but I enjoyed that. It didn't really feel like I was working so much because I hadn't done it in such a long time. But having that time just to reset and do the things that I want to do really, really, really helped me. Have you been watching Love Island? And if so, what do you think of it this year? I have been watching Love Island. I feel like it's, you know, getting in slow, but regardless, it's entertainment. And I feel like as it goes on, more juicy bits will happen. But I do feel like I'll never enjoy it the way that I used to. Like before it just, it seemed so pure, but every single year I have my favorites. This year, my favorites, I don't have a favorite for a guy at the moment actually, but my favorites for girls at the moment is has and Liberty. I just feel like they're such good vibes and I really like their relationship together in the house. I feel like they're really cute. I know this is kind of boring, but I really try not to judge people. <laughs> you know, some of the things that people have done on there have, you know, raised an eyebrow. But on previous episodes as well, there's things that have made me raise an eyebrow and then I've loved them in the end. So it's just very confusing to me. Will you do more personal YouTube videos again with what you've been through. I think I definitely will speak about certain things, but I'm trying to figure out how I want to speak about it and like how to speak about it in a way where it's like not going to damage me. I think I overthink things a lot. I know that a lot of things that I say like that it's on the internet and I think you can say one thing and then people think that you can't change your opinion on that one thing. So for example, I could say I go to bed at 11 p.m., which roughly I do, all right, every day I go to bed roughly between 11 and 12 p.m., right? So I could say I go to bed at 11, and then in a few weeks, I can be like, oh, I went to bed at 4 a.m. the other day and blah, 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 blah. And then someone would be like, I thought you said that you go to bed at 11. You can say something and people think that it's it's gonna be that way forever. So then when I'm saying certain things, people, people use it against me, they hold it against me. And it, I'm just like, oh, it's hard as well because some people on the internet are evil and want to trigger you. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, I want to educate people. I hate to be this person, but I do have a couple of projects coming up. They're definitely in the future will be more chatty, in-depth, conversation-y type content where I do go into detail about certain things. Like with my distorted eating, for example, I want to change the narrative that people with eating disorders want to be skinny because it's, it's not true. A lot of the time it's true, but it's not the truth. I hope I'm making sense. But yeah, definitely watch the space. Okay, last question guys. Can you show your hand tattoos? 
here they years. I actually recently got some new ones. This is one of the new ones. This is number seven. It's my lucky number and also the day I was born, 7th of August, 1995. This is a new one, the music note. I love music so, so much. It's a massive passion of mine. I love singing. I just, I just love music. This is a new one. This one here, it's a love heart with a little plane in it. I love to travel. It makes me feel free. It makes me, it makes me feel amazing. I think it's literally my favourite thing to do. And the last new tattoo that I got, this is the last tattoo that I got. It's a little kitty and I got it because I love cats and I'm a cat lady. Some of my tattoos I just like, some of them have a meaning. I hate when people say like, your tattoo has to have a meaning. No, it doesn't. I just have to like it, literally. I won't go through all of them, but for example, this one here, this equal sign, I got this done because I think people should be treated equally. This one is my star sign. I've got my dad's star sign here my mum's here. I've got an A on my little finger, A for Ayla. I've got a J here, Jade for Jade. A few more have meanings and some of them I just like. Okay guys, I think that is going to be it for a question and answer. Let me know if you guys have any video requests. I do have video ideas, but if there's anything that you specifically want to see, then let me know. If you haven't already, please remember to subscribe. A lot of people watch the videos, but don't remember to subscribe, but it really, really helps me out as well as liking the video. That really helps me out as well. Also, so that you get notified as soon as I upload, there's like some sort of bell button. I think it's down here somewhere, but there's a bell button that you can hit and then you will be notified every single time that I post. I appreciate you guys so, so much. I will see you in my next video. Love you.